The Russian propaganda reporter Resource writes about the possible liberation of Belarus by Ukrainian troops. The publication named several reasons why Kyiv might consider this step. They include an attempt to get NATO countries to join the war, strengthening of negotiating positions and elimination of the threat of a repeated Russian offensive against Kyiv. According to sources cited by the Ukrainian National Resistance Center, members of Belarus's security services privately acknowledge that their military lacks the strength and resources to engage in combat against Ukraine. It is also noted that Belarus has transferred a significant portion of its Soviet-era weaponry and ammunition to Russia. The military and political leadership of Belarus is hesitant to participate in the war against Ukraine, recognizing that their troops would be incapable of standing up to the Ukrainian Armed Forces reported National Resistance Center, which relays these insights based on its sources. In informal discussions, Belarusian security officials have admitted that their military is ill-equipped to fight Ukraine. The situation is exacerbated by Belarus having handed over much of its Soviet-era arsenal to Russia. Additionally, the Belarusian military lacks experience in modern warfare, heightening the unwillingness among personnel to engage in combat against Ukraine's defense forces. The Ukrainian operations in the Kursk region have also had an impact. There are direct parallels drawn between the Belarusian armed forces and Russian units that were securing the border in that region during off-the-record conversations. Belarusians are also concerned about their oil refineries taking a cue from how Ukraine has been striking Russian refineries with drones, which Russia has been unable to defend. They are acutely aware that Ukrainian missiles and drones can strike them, and Belarusian air defenses lack combat experience. Given that Russian air defenses have failed to protect their own refineries from Ukraine's defense forces, it's clear Belarus would struggle even more, the National Resistance Center notes. Additionally, President of Lithuania has called for sanctions on Belarus, equating it with Russia due to its dangerous activities. Gitanas Noseda argues that Belarus's military exercises with Russia, provision of their territory for an offensive against Ukraine, and overall border destabilization necessitate stringent measures in response. While Putin's army is trying to break through to Snagost, the Ukrainian armed forces have struck the enemy, who was located at the pontoon bridge across the Sima River. By October the 1st, Putin gave the order to the Russian Defense Ministry to drive the Ukrainian armed forces out of the Kursk region. On September the 10th, the Russian army launched a counter-offensive, Forbes reports. The Frontelligence Insight Analytical Group writes that the counter-attack by the Russian armed forces came as a surprise to many Ukrainian defenders, but no one can hide from the eyes of drone operators. Thus, operators from the 14th Aviation Systems Regiment saw enemy soldiers in the area of the pontoon bridge across the Sim River. Fighters from the 27th Artillery Brigade of the Ukrainian Armed Forces using the HIMARS MLRS immediately launched a series of cluster munition strikes. The video showed that at the beginning of the MLRS operation, there were up to 30 occupiers, and by the end of the missile attack, there were about 13 people alive. On another section of the front in the area of Snagosti, the Russian armed forces managed to regain control of a number of populated areas. The 22nd Mechanized Brigade of the Ukrainian Armed Forces counter-attacked the enemy in the area of Snagosti. The front line here is chaotic. Ukrainian forces are represented by airborne troops, battalions, and on the part of the Russian armed forces, it is a complete hodgepodge. Experts say that such an army is unlikely to be able to carry out Putin's direct order by October the 1st. However, in reality, this does not mean that the Russian armed forces do not have offensive capabilities. The Russian armed forces have an advantage in terms of manpower and equipment. However, the Ukrainian armed forces have an advantage in that they will not attack, but defend. Rather than fighting to the death over a specific piece of land, Ukrainian forces typically fight until they are on the brink of defeat and then move to more defensible positions. However, if enough Russian troops attack simultaneously from different directions, Ukrainian troops could be left without fallback positions. Ukrainian commanders understand this risk. That's why their drones are keeping a close eye on the likely approaches of Russian reinforcements, including any pontoon bridges over the Seam River, and why their best rocket artillery is ready to hit reinforcements before they reach the front lines.